Well, I, I'm exceptionally nervous tonight. And usually Brother St. brings us two songs, but we just got one tonight, so, so uh, we're right. going to have to trust the Lord. And if you came here tonight to hear somebody has great wisdom, you're probably going to be disappointed. If you came here tonight hoping to hear somebody tell you how good you are, and I am, and just what a great catch we were for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you're going to be disappointed because the honest truth is we're all dirty old sinners. Yeah. Saved yeah. by the grace of God. There's nothing yeah. good in us, but nothing. the Holy Spirit that God, by the way, placed there yeah. when we accepted eternal salvation through His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. But I'll, I'll tell you what I will do if you'll pray for us and ask God to get Tom Berry out of the way, I'll, I'll try to tune in to the Lord and bring you what the Lord wants to preach tonight. Amen. And so I, I desire your prayers tonight. All right, if you have your Bibles, let's go to 2 Timothy, very familiar verse of Scripture that I think certainly fits the time in which we're in. And we'll begin reading at verse number 3. 2 Timothy, chapter 3, and, and verse number 1. Apostle Paul writes, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now, I, I looked that word up. It means dangerous, extremely dangerous times. But I, I looked it up in all the other Bibles, and it said difficult times. Now, I'm going to tell you something. That's like telling you that, that, that one person saying the bridge is out, don't go down that road, and you have, you're warned and don't do it. And somebody, knowing the bridge is out, just saying, hey, be careful. <laughs> There's a big difference in what that means. It says perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fears, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now it's Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and we'll stop right there and we'll pray and ask God to give us the message. Father, we bow before you tonight, Lord, realizing how inadequate we are to preach the Word of God. God, there'll be no preaching done here tonight unless you do it. I ask God that you search me. God, I've, I've tried to confess everything I know that would keep you from using me tonight, but God, please, please put it under the sin, whether I confessed it and knew it or whether I don't, that you might feed your blessed people. Now, God, we ask for a protective hedge about this place. Yes. We ask, God, that you bind up the devil and all his forces of hell tonight, Lord. Let there be liberty to preach your word to God. And, Lord, we'll be so very, very careful to give you the praise and the glory, for you alone deserve that, my Father. Yes. And we ask it in that name above all names, the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. you. may be seated. Now, folks, we're, I believe, living in a time period when not just America, not just this country in which we live in, 
But the whole world is in chaos. The whole world is filled with lies and wickedness and deceitfulness and confusion. Honor is falling to the side in this day and time. Uh, uh, We also find that that integrity is rapidly disappearing in the hearts of men. Natural love is frowned upon, but uh, 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 looked upon as if it's wrong. And a, a, a lustful, wicked, reproachful type of love is trying to be in the position to where once a family should be. We are quickly approaching a one world religion. If you, if you don't see that, then, then you've got your head here. Head. We've got so many different members of so many religion and big leaders coming together trying to find even ground, something that they can stand on together when they're all different and they don't know the same Jesus. That's right. Amen. We're in a mess, aren't we, in this country? The Bible says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? I can't stand with somebody that don't believe that Jesus is God. I can't stand with somebody that doesn't believe that Jesus is the way. You notice I didn't say the way or a way, but he is the way, the truth, and the life. And that no man will come to the Father but by him. I can't stand and preach with somebody like that. I can't stand and preach with somebody and fellowship with somebody and worship with somebody that makes Jesus just a man. No greater than me. Well, if he's not greater than me, then he's he's certainly full of a lot of problems. And he cannot die for my sins. And he cannot save me from my sin. We're in a mess. We're also headed, I believe, quickly into a one world government. It's being set up. I believe the foundation, Pastor, has already been laid. I believe the walls have come up. And I believe that soon they'll cap that building off and the one world government will be on the scene. I believe all it takes for the Antichrist to come and take his position is for enough trouble in this world all across the world to come to where there seems no way to solve it, no way to get rid of it, no way to make it better, and then he will come on the scene and supposedly have the answers to everything. Yes. We have the answer to one thing. You'll have the answer on how to drag the world off into hell. Amen? I believe the one world government is on its way. This world has lost sight of God. Don't you agree? Amen. Yes. It's not like it was when I was growing up. It's not like it was when I talked to my grandfather. It's not like it was that men were men and women were women and they was a set of rules and you just went so far. And if it didn't line up with the word of God, then you didn't do it. Amen? Amen. Some of you looking like at me like, are you going to preach or just give us bad news? Well, I hope to preach once I, I get this foundation laid. They've lost sight of God. You know what happens to man when he loses sight of God? He loses his mind. He loses his ability to think properly, to act properly, to, to do things properly. As a matter of fact, when he loses his mind, you'll find through history and even today when they lose sight of God and they lose their mind, then the next thing happens is that every man does what's right in his own image and that's where we are. That's right. Amen. We're living in a world where there's no absolutes anymore. That's right. If there's no absolute right, then of course there could be an absolute wrong. But there is an absolute right. It's the Word of God. It's Jesus Christ. It's the Holy Spirit. It's God Almighty. But we've lost our sight of God, I'm afraid. Man without God always will. 
do whatever he thinks is right. Even to the point of damaging innocent children. And convincing them that there's no God. Convince them that, that they can choose what they are, male or female. God made that choice. God is infallible. God makes no mistakes. And let me tell you this, young people. If you were a male when you were born, that's what God meant for you to be. And that's what he means for you to get to heaven as a male. And a female. Now this this will ruffle a lot of people, but I really don't care anymore. You know what's wrong with people? People are afraid to give out the truth because they're afraid somebody will get upset. Well, let me tell you something. Whether you give out the truth or you don't, they're upset. So you might as well give out the truth. Amen? You say, you sound mad, brother Tom. I am. I'm mad. The way this world is headed, which is straight for the pits of hell. You may be thinking, preacher, how close are we to God taking his church out of this world? Now, you've heard it's close for a long time. But I'm going to tell you one thing. You've never seen so much prophecy fulfilled as you are in this time. I believe without any apology, without any mistake, I believe Jesus Christ is soon coming to get his church. Whether the world likes it, whether Biden likes it, whether Putin likes it, makes no difference. When God says it's time to leave here, we're going to hear, come up hither. And we're going to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. We're going to cast off this body that we struggle and fight with. We're going to cast off the sin that we were born with. And we're going to be made perfect. Finally conformed to the image of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Which is the work of sanctification that God's been working on ever since we've been saved. I'm starting to get a little windy here. I guess I'm getting old. How close is it? Well, I believe it's at the door. Now, I don't know. My daughter keeps me up to date with things, and sometimes people send me things to read. But from what I understand, there's more than one red heifer right now that's supposed to be available. There's something like five of them, I think. She said, what's the importance of that? There has to be a red heifer that's not offered in the temple but offered outside the gates of the temple yes. so that God's temple and God's men and everything that is of God can be cleansed. And then, then Amen. we'll see things start to culminate to an end. I'm looking forward to it. Yes. From what I, I read, there's at least five of them. I've also read that, that Israel has... Every utensil, every single utensil, it needs to perform the Old Testament sacrifice. He said, well, Brother Tom, that sounds good, but who knows how to sacrifice? As a matter of fact, there's men of the tribe of Levi that have been taught how to perform just exactly that, how to operate the, the sacrifice in the temple. You say, well, Brother Tom, that sounds like a lot of things are lining up. Yeah. You yeah. think? Yeah. You think it is? Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. This world, according to the Bible, will be just as it was in the day of Noah yes. when the Son of God appears. Amen. Well, look around you. Yeah. Amen. I, I hate to say it, but I think we're worse than it was in the days of Noah. Amen. I think we're worse. This world is vile. It's messed up. It's full of flesh and no spiritual direction. Now, I don't know about you. I'll take chances on some things. I will. If I got a break on a car, maybe not quite what it should be. I might get in and try. Huh? I might get on a boat, a fishing boat that I've got that's Got a little late and it's like, well, I can swim. Maybe I'll take a chance on it. Yeah. 
But there's one thing I won't take a chance on. I will not take a chance on my eternal salvation. Yes, I'll not gamble with it. You say, well, do you think all those things are going to make it happen soon? Yes, soon. Yes, look up, church. Your redemption draws nigh. Yes. And look up, sinner. Your time of visitation is drawing to an end. I used to hear so much preached about the blood of Christ and sin and repentance. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor Lawson, I've listened to a lot of stuff here lately. You know what? The church has quit preaching that. Yeah. And if you don't know that you need to repent that something's wrong with you, yeah. and if you don't know how to get that right so that you can be in the favor of God, yeah. then how will you know how to escape hell? You can't. You're, you're crippled to where you cannot get into heaven yeah. under those conditions. I believe time end is almost at the door. So I, I got to thinking on this, and after God put my mind on all this, I said, all right, Lord. I said, that's pretty, that's pretty serious and, and quite honestly kind of depressing that we've got to this point as men and women. I said, now what can we preach on? What's the most important thing that we need to be preaching in these wicked days in which we live? Yeah. It didn't take him three seconds. It didn't take him no time. You know what he told me? He said, preach on the precious blood of my son, Jesus Christ, who I gave yeah. to redeem yeah. a lost and sinful dying world. Amen. You notice how many salvation messages have been lately in this church? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I mean, hands go up. They, they say, well, I don't, I'm not sure I'm saved. I, yeah. But the aisles of the, the, the platform here are not full. No. That is taking a chance that you will regret should Jesus appear and you've been under conviction. Amen. If you're truly saved tonight, you say, well, we're the church. That don't mean everybody sitting here is truly saved. How do you know that, Brother Tom? Because I thought I was saved at one time until God had a man preach a message on the wheats and the tares, and he said, that's you. Thank you, son. I appreciate that. Amen. I don't take in consideration whether you're saved or not. Only you and God knows that. And some of you, only God knows it because you've been confused thinking if you line up with this and you line up with that, if you go to this type of church or that type of church, if you give and help people, you'll get to heaven. No. No. You know what you'll get with all that? You'll get a straight trip to hell if that's the only thing you've got. The only way that you and I are saved tonight sitting here is because of the precious blood of the precious Lamb of God and for His perfection that is accounted to our account before God. What can wash away my sin? What's the answer, church? What can make me whole again? That's a question. I hope nobody in here is not too sure about that. It's the blood. It's the blood of God's own son. It's the blood of God's only begotten son. It's the best that heaven had to offer. You're not your own. We're purchased, bought at a precious price. Pastor said uh, not to, uh, maybe today, nothing's free. They said, well, salvation's free. No, it's free for you and me if we'll accept it. It costs God his own son's life 
to set you and me free. Amen. Amen. No other way. No other way. I love that old song. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood. Lose what? Lose all. 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 You mean every bit of it? You mean every sin past, present, and from future? We cleanse us from all. How can you not love God? What a good God to take a bunch of wicked people and love them so much that he'd give his son as a, a payment for our sins. I've never got over that. I, if you've got over it, you, you, you need to get on it again. Folks, I have never got over what Jesus Christ and God did for me. You saw, Brother Tom, you look like you're a pretty good guy. You ain't seeing the insides of me. I'm inside, I am wicked, and I'm filthy, and I'm vile, and I'm needy, and I'm wretched. And the only way I escape being at my eternal life is because of the gift that God gave to us. Yeah. Hebrews 9.22, I've heard people say, wow. I'm about tired of hearing about that blood. All, all you Baptists preach about is blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. It right. Well, Hebrews chapter 9, I believe verse 22 says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Now, that's a dogmatic statement right there. When a statement like that is made, it's made because there's an surety of it. It's not up for discussion it's not up to analyze. It's just up to believe and accept it and claim that gift. I'm going to tell you something. If you're here tonight, God's trying to get a hold of you by your heart. Do you know something? It's not God's will that any should perish. He's not a respecter of persons. He wishes that all should come to repentance. Everybody. If you go to hell, you'll go to hell over top of the church, the blood, the cross, the conviction of the Holy Spirit. You will willingly choose to go there. In Matthew 26 through 28, Jesus, at the Last Supper, as we called it, but I don't know what's the last supper or not. From what I read in the Bible, we're fixing to have another one. When he says, come up, come up, my bride. I ain't going to be a table set and a time like there's never been. So we'll call it the, the next to last supper, if you don't mind. It was the last one here, but it's not the last one there. This is my blood, he said, of the new Testament, not the Old Testament, not the old sacrificial system. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for just a few. I messed up, didn't I? Which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Wow. How much is, how, how much is many? As many as will come. To whosoever will, let him come. What's, what's the requirement there? That you will. No other hindrance but that. There are a lot of folks in this time in which we live that do not believe that. They think, oh, I can be good enough. I can give enough. I can work hard enough to get to heaven, but that's not true. They think Jesus' blood has no more power to save and cleanse a sinner than Brother Van or mine. And if you depend on our blood, you're in trouble. That's a dangerous thing to believe and think. Listen to me tonight. Your eternal salvation relies on your faith in His blood. 
That's the only way you can be born again. And as a matter of fact, his father, who is God Almighty, who created it all and is of, a, of, of so much power that nobody can even imagine the power he has, you know what he did? It meant everything to him yeah. as far as your relationship and my relationship yeah. stands. Your eternal salvation relies on your faith in this blood. It, your, your belief on the blood of Christ determines whether you spend eternity in heaven, no pain, no sorrow, no sickness, no death, no. in the presence of the Lord, yeah. joy forever, no more funerals there. I don't know how many funerals I preached, but I'd be glad if the Lord came and it was the last one. It was the last one. Amen. Amen. It depends on whether you spend eternity in heaven yes. or eternity in hell. That's right, Tom. Amen. Brother Tom, you really believe in hell? I do. Yes. The Bible says. The Bible yes. speaks of it. Jesus believed in it. Oh, yeah. yes. This word right here is without error. Amen. And Jesus warned more about hell than anything else I could find in the Bible. Right. There is a hell. Your, your decision on what you believe about the blood of Christ yeah. will determine whether you go to heaven. Pastor, every time I read about heaven, it makes me, I don't know. Yeah. I, I keep saying if I could find a button, I'd push it, I would. Mm -hmm. I'd get us there however I could. But you know what? It depends on whether you'll see him in heaven for eternity on streets of gold with no needs and no sorrow and no wants with God or you'll spend an eternity in hell in suffering. That don't seem like a, a hard decision to make. So why well, believe in heaven I don't believe in hell? Well, you're in trouble. You can be fooled with that type of thinking. That's how much it depends, how much your opinion of the work of Jesus Christ depends on your eternal destination. It got quiet, didn't it? Amen. I believe with all my heart God gave this message. I don't know whether it's for somebody in this church or whether it's for somebody on the internet or somebody to hear the message later but yes. God's trying to warn people yes, he is. Wow. to Amen. make sure that they're in his son yes. and his son is in them yes. Yes. I believe that with all my heart God wants to bless you and me doesn't he God doesn't want to hammer you or beat you down or make you sick or punish you in some way. God wants to bless you. That's why he sent his son to shed his blood so that he could bless you to his fullest. He wants to bless you. Do you know unless you accept the blood of Christ, God can't bless you? He can't. When you refuse and repudiate the finished work of Christ, shedding his blood on Calvary, this is what you're doing. You're saying, God, I don't believe. And you're forcing him not to bless you. You're forcing him to judge you. I don't want to be judged under under my goodness. I don't want to be judged under, under my greatness. I don't want to be judged under my abilities. I want to be judged according to what Jesus did in perfection while he was on this earth, dying for my sins, arising the third and appointed day, walking on this earth 40 days, the number of tests to prove he did what he said he would do, and then arising to his father, sitting down at the right hand of God, saying, it is finished. I don't worry about going to hell. No. No, thank God. The only way I can go to hell is if Jesus goes there because I'm in him. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
need to be careful what we believe. In 1 John, it says, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Amen. That took a load off of me when I realized that. I knew my sin. You know, you know people think preachers are born so good. I don't know where they get that from. No. I don't, Brother Lawson. No. I'll tell you how good this preacher was. More than once, members of my family and some neighbors, too, said he'll never see 21 years old because I was so wild. Aren't you glad that the neighbors and the kin folk don't have the answers to your eternal salvation? Well, I remember when I told people I was the preacher. Pastor, of all people, Tom, we, we wouldn't have pictured you as a preacher. Ain't God good? Oh, yeah. He's, bad. He's a forgiving, ever-loving God. Ephesians 1, 7 says, In whom we have redemption. Redemption. I like that word, redemption. Redeemed. In other words, because I believed in him, he accepted me, chose me because of my faith and redeemed me from my penalty of sin. It says, in whom we have redemption through what? You mean it's about the blood again? Through his blood. By the blood, of the blood, through the blood, because of the blood, eternal, perfect, sinless blood of the blessed Lamb of God. Yes. I may not get to preach again, if you don't mind. I just ended here with, with preaching on the blood, if that's all right. Yeah. Revelation 1 5 says, Unto him who loved us <laughs> and washed us of our sins. In, here it comes, his own blood. I had a fellow one time tell me, Jesus spilt his blood. I said, not so. Not so. I said, spilling something means you had an accident. I said, Jesus shed his blood for a specific reason yeah. to redeem you and wash you and cleanse you and me from our sins. Yeah. That wasn't a mistake. Right. Matter of fact, according to the word of God, he was the lamb of God slain before the foundations of the world were. I believe that's before you and I got here, right? right. Amen. If you're lost now at this moment, I want you to understand something. It's time to be saved. Yes, it is. How much time do you have left? Anybody know? No. I could get done preaching here and walk to the back of the vegetable there and pass out dead. Right. Now, that'll bring some sorrow to my wife, I certainly hope. <laughs> and to my children. But... <laughs> But for me, that's not a bad deal. No. To live is Christ and to die is gain. Be with the one I love. Yes. To be absent from this body that's wearing out is to be present with the Lord with a body that never wears out. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just don't seem like that bad a deal to me. But it could happen. We who are born again. You ever notice when preachers start preaching about the return of Christ? Everybody gets so bubbly. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Woo. I'm glad that's soon to happen. Yeah. Do you realize we have to make a little stop? Uh -huh. Not to be judged for our sins. They were judged at Calvary. They were under the blood of Jesus Christ. They not only were washed, but they were removed from his memories, never to be thought of again. But we'll make a stop there to just find out what we did with this message that he gave us 
about right. Jesus Christ and how he is the only hope you, me, and the rest of this messed up world has to get out of this mess. Amen? Amen. I believe that if you're lost tonight, I wouldn't hesitate. How long do you think I'll live, Brother Tom? Well, I've looked at some of you. I don't think it's too long. <laughs> Look at me. Some of you are thinking I'm young. Don't mean a thing. It's appointed unto man wants to die. That's right. And after that, the judgment. Amen. Amen. If you're saved tonight, I'm going to ask you a question. If you really are saved, how can we be excited and looking for Jesus to return when we got brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and, and children and neighbors and people we work with that for sure without the shed blood of Christ are without hope. They've got a one-way ticket to hell in that situation. I believe tonight if, if we really are what we say we are and we really do believe what we say we do and if we believe it because it's the word of God and it's infallible then I think maybe maybe it's time for God's people to get on the altar beg God for those souls beg God to set them free from the penalty of sin and the lie that they've been fed that they believe amen that's like seeing somebody hungry I've never understood. People see somebody hungry and they say, I'm going to pray for you, brother. I'm going to pray for you, sir. <laughs> well, how about trying a Big Mac or a T-bone steak every once in a while? How about helping them? Yeah. There's people all over the world starving right. with nothing to eat. And the world is full of even more people that are starving to find out the truth. Right. How can we partake of what God's given us and not want to tell them so that they can have it too. Isn't that selfish? It's selfish. Jesus made it simple. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, if you'll do that, I'll be with you while you're doing it, even to the ends of the world. Do you have a testimony? Yeah. Do you know what's about to happen? Yeah. Are you going to tell them, be careful going down that road? Are you going to say, hey, don't go to the end of that road. The bridge is off and you're going to fall into hell. Yeah. Everybody was shouting a minute ago. You know what happened when God gave that to me? I got real quiet. I started to think on that a while. I don't want to see anybody, not somebody that's done me the worst damage, fall off into a devil's hell. I don't want to see that. So you got a choice tonight. If you're lost, you can say, Lord, I, I'm a sinner. And I'm repenting. And I believe, I believe with 100% of my heart that your blood is sufficient to cleanse me from my sin and make me a child of God. Amen. If you're here and you got lost loved ones, might be a good time to lift their name up to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now I'm done. I'm going to pray and... and uh, pastor's going to come up, but search yourself. There's, there's some decisions to be made very quickly here. Amen. 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 All right. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for, for this opportunity again to preach your word. God's quiet all over the house of God, which means to me, Father, that you're, you're speaking to hearts. God, that you're causing those hearts to see 
with your eyes and your thoughts with the mind of Christ. Now, God, I ask that you move according to your power and your mercy and your grace and that you help your people. Help us, Lord, to leave here differently than when we came closer to you. And we'll be careful, Lord, to give you all the praise and the glory for what happens from our dedication to what your call is. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen.